Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel, you boys. Starco Gaming here, back with another Marvel Future Fight video, guys. Don't forget to hit the sub and like button if you enjoy the content to show your support to the channel, and make sure to enable the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified when we release a new video or when a live stream is happening. So, guys, today we're gonna talk about my boy, I Draw. Man, my first impression in my uh, live stream update live stream was that this guy was actually trash, and I kind of want to do a little bit deeper testing to see if he was actually better than I first thought. And I gotta admit, guys, in my original first impression of him, I was totally 100% wrong about him. This guy is actually pretty damn solid, you know, for free to play characters. He's not gonna be uh, a meta for anything, but he is pretty goddamn solid for War Boss Ultimate, uh, Shallow Land, and he's a decent uh, Blast Super Villain Alliance Battle Extreme character. You know, you can actually push around 500,000 with him in Alliance Battle Extreme, which is pretty decent for a free to play character in my opinion for that day specifically so overall this guy is actually a lot better than we first thought uh, what can you do in World Boss Ultimate? World Boss Ultimate is going to shine on two different days. It's going to shine against, um, what is his name, Corvus Glade, uh, stage 40 plus, and it's going to shine against a Bonima stage 40 plus. Apparently, the minions he actually gets from his third skill does elemental damage to um, a Bonima, which helps him a lot. So, he's able to cover those two World Boss Ultimate at stage 40 plus. So, uh, with a raid level around 335, I think. So I think that uh, that's actually pretty damn solid in my opinion. So World Boss Ultimate, very great. If we go in Alliance Battle Extreme, like I said, uh, personally I was able to score 450,000, and that's the Obelisk we're running with. So if we add something like a CTP of Energy, we'll do that 500,000 uh, without a problem, and probably most likely close to 600,000. So very solid for Alliance Battle Extreme, not as solid as Strife or Tier 3 Magneto. But uh, after that, it's actually one of the best options. Him and Mysterio are pretty much the best third option if you don't have Strife or Tier 3 Mysterio. So very, very, very solid there. And in Shallow Land, this guy can do between stage 70 and 80, 80 without too much problem. So very, very solid PvE character, guys. Now. I tested him in, in timeline on my personal time. That's not going to be in the gameplay section because I don't have immunity to guard break on him. I don't have anything PvP for him, so I cannot do solid testing. But uh, it felt really disappointing. It felt really disappointing. Now, uh, obviously, Alan Conquest is going to be totally different than, um, than the timeline battle. So in Alan Conquest, he might be able to perform, but I don't plan on Conquest, so I will not be able to cover that part in this review, guys. So. Personally, PvE wise, World Boss Ultimate, Shallow Land, and Alliance Battle Extreme, this guy is pretty damn strong. Not a mana, but uh, above average, that is for sure. Not as strong as Molten Man. Molten Man is still a lot stronger than this guy. Molten Man is actually going to be tomorrow uh, character review, guys. But this guy, Hydroman, is a very solid character. Now, guys, we're gonna go through my build before we jump in the gameplay and gameplay, gameplay section. By the way, guys, we're gonna have a uh, wall boss ultimate, uh, a bunny muff 40, alliance battle extreme, blast a super villain, and then we're gonna have story mode 13 1 on autoplay to sh a little bit show uh, what kind of skill is he actually used on AI play. So that's gonna be part of the gameplay, but before that, we're gonna take a quick look at my build and that will give you an idea of how you need to build them to be able to achieve those uh, those things pretty much. So if we go in info here, rank is number 5 obviously with the Yuru being uh, free free to remove right now, I can actually put the best Yuru on every single character I'm reviewing this update. So this is pretty damn amazing. I wish they just leave it that way, make it so much easier for content creator to review uh, characters in a good environment. That will be awesome. But it's only going to be for this month, guys. So we're gonna enjoy it. That's for sure. So if you take a quick look at his stats here. We have max cooldown, maxing or defense. 
Max critical damage, critical rate is 56%, attack speed 126%. Physical attack, even though he's a water character, he's actually a physical attack character. So 18,221 physical attack here. And the little uh, buff he has is, here is a pure evil. Uh, increased damage dealt to super hero type characters by 4%. Nothing very big here, that's for sure. Uh, if we look at the gear, you can see... Uh, mythical U everywhere, fully uh, uh, amplify, you know, 5 slot amplify everywhere. We have a mix of physical attack, critical damage, critical uh, rate, and 1 HP U just to get that uh, going score just a little bit higher since I did not really need anything else there. If we look at the easel set, we're running Power of Angry Oak, uh, set bonus stage 6 and effect. So we have all attack, all defense, and the critical rate 8.5%. Attack speed 7.7%. In all defense 8.1%. Activation rate 12% chance when attacking, plus 20% increase of all attack for 20 seconds. With a cooldown time of 60 seconds. And the custom gear, we take a quick look at it earlier. Uh, we have 39.6% critical damage with 180% damage proc. Pretty solid custom gear. Obviously, it's not a CTP of energy or CTP of destruction. You could do so much better with any of those. At least, well, in both game mode and all game, all PvE game modes, World Boss Ultimate, Shadowland, and Alliance Battle Extreme. But this is a average obelisk that most people can actually have around, so uh, that's why I went with this obelisk here, uh, to be honest. Now, if we look at his skills, uh, his skills are actually pretty awesome. You have the this skill here, every time you enlarge, uh, you get super armor for 10 seconds, all defense out for 30% for 10 seconds. Uh, now, how does the enlarge work? It's, uh, I think it's from here, right? <laughs> yeah, it's from here. Uh, tier 1 passive activation rate when skill regular attack excluded is used. Apply to self. Increase all attack by 7%, all defense by 7%. Stack up to 5 times. So basically, you want to stack up to 5 times here. Uh, well, after you use 5 skills, you're going to get a, a stack amount of 35% all attack, 35% all defense. Uh, then, uh, if you get burn, if you take burn damage, those stacks will be reduced. If not, uh, this buff will stay uh, forever, pretty much. Forever. And then, after 3 uses, I'm guessing that's after 3 stacks here, uh, you get increased character size by 20%, all attack by 40%, and all defense by 40% for 10 seconds. And that is the enlarged buff, guys. When your character size increase, that's where you're going to get your super armor from the tier 2 passive. Uh, his leadership is also pretty good if you're facing uh, Carver's Glaive and Wall Boss Ultimate. You actually want to put him as a lead so he's immune to bleed damage and he put just two uh, support characters like Shuri and Valkyrie with him and that will make him pretty damn good against Garvis Glaive since he cannot bleed that really increases survivability by a lot. Now what, what are the best skill to be used on this guy? First if you have a proc you want to proc on this skill. The fifth skill plus you get 25% increase of physical attack with this skill. Pretty much you want to do uh, with your proc you want to do two Cancel into 5 and you get your proc. Then you want to use the third skill on cooldown to have your minions out. And uh, you want to use your uh, your fourth skill. You can cancel it. It doesn't matter how you're going to use it or when you don't have a proc going on. Uh, very good skill to use and give you increased survivability too. Then you have the first skill. First skill is just basic damage. It's not very important uh, to actually add in your rotation. Uh, pretty much my rotation was 3, cancel, uh, 2, cancel, 5, and try to sing that proc on number 5. Then I'll put the, the skill number 4 as a filler to just run around with that skill and give me my guards against it. And then just repeat that. And it's actually pretty damn solid, guys. This guy is pretty damn solid. Very good free-to-play character, guys. That is for sure. Um, this guy's up about the power of Korat, so he is a guy that will actually put in the top 10 characters for new players without a doubt with Molten Men, both them and their dads for sure. But that we're gonna be covering that in um, in about a week, you know, when we start doing uh, 
an updated version of all those videos you know tier list and all that kind of stuff we're gonna be covering uh this guy where we rank him in those lists that's for sure but anyway yes this guy is worth getting guys not as good as molten man if you have to choose between molten man and hydro man i recommend you to go with uh molten man before hydro man just for example yesterday on the stream i clear proxima 40 with hydro man in 37 seconds so that gives you an idea of the difference of power hydro molten man is so much stronger but hydro man is still a very good character so guys with that said next we're gonna jump in the gameplay we're gonna start with wall boss ultimate then alliance battle extreme then story mode on autoplay hopefully you guys enjoy the gameplay again don't forget to hit the sub and like button if you enjoy the content show your support to the channel and do not forget to uh, enable the bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified when we release a new video or we are going live with a live stream so guys thank you for watching enjoy the gameplay and I'll see you in the next video thank you